A Kemper. Kemper is playing the Emmercool Hive Mind Show and Tell Super Cool Awesome deck. Yeah, this deck's so sweet. Yeah, it's awesome. I mean, this is a uh, Magic Online creation that a lot of people thought was just like a Moto phenomenon, that it always did well in Moto, but in real life legacy tournaments it wouldn't be good. Yeah. And nobody really ever played it at real life legacy tournaments. And then people decided to play it at the most recent Legacy Grand Prix, and it did really well. All right, and so uh, Camper plays an island, doesn't use his Brainstorm, probably watched uh, AJTV about yeah. the Brainstorm. And we are playing a Mox Diamond, discarding the land. Playing two Mox Diamonds? Is that what's going on right now? Yeah, discarding another land. Now, why would you play two Mox Diamonds and discard two lands? Uh, he has a third land in his hand. And he wants to, what's he, oh, is he's he going to... He's going to play a turn one Sphere. That's a play. Yeah. All right, that's exciting. What temp, what Trinosphere does is any spell that costs more than three actually just costs three now. Well, any spell that costs less than three. Yeah, less than three, three sorry, yeah. And he found the force. The exact opposite. Okay, so is he going to force it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but he didn't. He doesn't have a second land, though. I think he put it on top of his library. Did he? All right, so force, pitching, show and tell. Trinosphere is going away, and Che has what? Uh, two cards in hand. Yeah. And one sundial, and that's not good. That's not going to do it. And much. one's Gideon? Does he have Gideon in his deck? Yes, he does have Gideon. It's not a good hand. Not a good hand for what he has in play. Brainstorm. I don't think he has a land. Okay, he just drew two. Yeah, so... He's able to put uh, an Intuition and another card on the top of his library. Yep. And play now, his land. If if there was not a uh, Force of Will on the top three cards of Kemper's library... Um, this game just have been like almost locked up for Jay. Yeah. He has the Especially with the too. Mox Diamonds, like yeah. the packs aren't really going to do anything. Yeah. Because by the time he gets Show and Tell into play and then has to play, pay a, play a pact, yeah. he should have the mana. Yeah, All right. So. so Jay misses on a land drop, just says go. During his upkeep, he uh, locks down his... Uh, uh, Kemper's Island with a Rishadon port. Yep, yeah, and that'll prevent Kemper from being able to play show, show and, tell. and tell. And the fact that Kemper doesn't have a fourth land is actually going to be somewhat problematic. He didn't want to play the Grim Monolith there? I'm not really sure why, but I don't something we don't see. Yeah, who knows. Alright, so there's another Trinosphere. And that's resolving. That's definitely resolving, yeah. That's a big game. Yeah, that's a huge game. Uh, see, a huge issue is that Hive Mind can't really combo. Well, it's a pay three mana. So what happens is pact. he's got to play the Hive Mind, say go, then pay three for a pact. Yeah. And then if Jay doesn't, if Jay gets up to five mana, that's just not going to do anything. Yeah. Both players are going to trade four fours, and he can't. Cameron might not even be able to pay for it because he doesn't have red, right? He does not. Have red. No, he does have two uh, volcanic. He has volcanic islands. Okay. Oh, he has Fire Spot Cyborg. That's that's interesting. I like that. Yeah. It seems good. Uh, nice Zoo fish deck. probably <laughs> going to pick up a little bit. All right, three islands. I'm curious what are on his islands. I think they're, like, just proxies for things. They <laughs> say, like, Wasteland whatnot. All right, on Grim Monolith comes down. And Jay's going to take his turn. Maybe he's going to draw land. And he gets their Wasteland... Uh, pretty good land. And I think you just play the Wasteland. And then you can just pass and tap one of his lands. Port. I mean, he could Wasteland his own Rishon on port. That's, that's a play. <laughs> okay, that doesn't happen. You can't do that. Okay, there we go. Wouldn't you just want to tap down a land? Yeah. I think he and forgot so, I mean, to turn his fear in play. Ending the turn compared to wasting your turn... <laughs> yeah. One of I'm, these things is not like the other. All right, so he just drew his hive mind. So, do you just tap out for hive mind? No, because you still don't have the land for it. Like, and he can actually just, end, just the end the turn. turn. Yeah. The <laughs> <laughs> Why did we not see that? All right. Oh, I mean. So Kemper is going to have to find an emerald. 
But he has three, so he can just intuition for three of them. And show and tell that. What are you going to do to that? Probably going to lose. I don't think Jay's going to do anything to it. I don't can, think does so. he have an answer to it besides making him sack it? Um. Oh, Oblivion Ring. He has four Oblivion Ring. Oh, he does. Yeah, those are pretty good against Emrakul, huh? Yeah. Or Humility. Yeah. Three Humility? This is a rough matchup for... Okay. Like, if, if, if uh, Show and Tell doesn't come out of the gates right away, it's a really rough matchup. I mean, he's not drawing the appropriate things right now, but... Yeah. I mean, he just doesn't right. have... So, Intuition. And now, why would you Intuition with your Monolith? Uh, I'm not sure. I guess he's planning on doing something this turn with that mana. That, that must seems, be why. That seems wrong. Yeah, just in case. Like, what if it... He's going to get more Hive Minds? Okay, yeah, he's going to get Emrakul's. All right. He's pulling cards to the front that didn't make any sense. And so three Emrakul's. One goes to his hand. The rest go back into his library because of the shuffle effect from the Eldrazi spells. Mm -hmm. The mythic so, Eldrazi spells. Yes. Such as Emrakul, Ulamog. Yeah, if you were ever curious what the biggest creature in the game of Magic is, it's on the table right now. In the history of the game. In the history of the game. Biggest guy. I remember back when uh, Leviathan was the biggest creature ever. Or uh, Tidal Kraken. <laughs> so 12 12. Alright, so Emrakul in hand. And. He's going to intuition again? What's he going to get? Show and tells? All right, and then he says go. Yeah. Is that a Krakus? <laughs> <laughs> no way. And, it's, and it's over. <laughs> oh, please just hold it. Don't show it to him. Oh, he has to show it to him in case he like goes off with the pack. No, he has Sundial in play. Yeah. This is absurd. This is exciting. <laughs> this is actually quite exciting. I mean, now we can just play Gideon and kill his opponent. He's so he's a stack stack thing can actually kill people. I was like, oh, Druidic Satchel. That's probably no, his way Gideon. Gideon. Yeah, Gideon. Gideon's a 6-6. Six, six. And just getting so annoyed that you just concede. He plays Caraxes, Gideon, and this one's just like, come on. <laughs> really? <laughs> this is happening? Okay, what's the argument? Okay. I think they're talking about intuition with Emrakul means it still result. Wait, why didn't you shuffle the intuition in your deck with, with the Emrakul? Yeah, I think you do, yeah. Yeah, because it goes on the stack once everything goes off. So, yeah, yeah one, intu one intuition should be in his deck. I'm pretty sure on that. I think that's the uh, argument they're having right now. Oh, so he didn't even... No, he just tapped down a land. He didn't even play his Gideon. He just wants him to show for an Emrakul, I guess. There's Ancient... Oh, so now he can Ancient Tomb play the Gideon and hide the Krakus just for value. This is like the most value play of all time. He's not going to do it? What is he scared of? I have no idea. There's not a spell in his opponent's deck that gets him out of the lock that he has him in. Yeah, like literally his opponent is just stone yeah, dead. He and doesn't have a can't wasteland. Even, his opponent can't even counter the Gideon or anything. He's yeah, and he doesn't have Wasteland. Show and tell. Yeah, it resolves. <laughs> Emrakul. <laughs> I did that. I did Brilliant. that. I did that at uh, GP uh, Columbus. My opponent turned to show and tells, and I've never seen the card before, so I read it, and I assume that he's going to go for Emrakul or Progenitus. And so I just put my Krakus in play. And, oh, no, I put a knight in play and go search up Krakus. Nice. It was a lot of fun. All right, there's Big Gideon. All right. I mean, Gideon what is in. Kemper thinking right now? His opponent has a Sundial of the Infinite and a Krakus in play. <laughs> and Shred of Spear. He's <laughs> trying to get <laughs> combo with zero cost spells. This is my favorite thing about Legacy. Like, <laughs> he just, just runs like, into the nightmare matchup. Like, the, the absolute nightmare. Round five. Can't win. 
three Sundial the I Infinite. I mean, Stacks for the Stacks is the nightmare matchup for a lot of decks. Is it? Like, think about like trying to play Storm against a deck with like Trinospheres. True. And like and Chalices. Smokestack. Like he has four Chalice, four Smokestack, and, and so what is Stacks bad against? Um, it's like terrible against Zoo. With humility, Ghostly Prism. I mean, I don't know. I played this deck at Worlds when they had Legacy at Worlds that one year. Sure. And um, I won every match I won the die roll and lost every match I lost the die roll. Oh, wow. So. All right, so I think Kemper has re realized that it's over. Well, he's gonna keep playing just so his opponent doesn't think he uh, doesn't have any outs. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, once now your opponent has gonna play an Elspeth, but then it's a two turn clock with the Gideon. That's a big game. So he can finish games pretty fast. Actually, it's yeah. not just it's it's not. I just... mean, that's a big difference from how it used to be because you used to not have Planeswalkers. Oh yeah. So like, maybe this deck's really good now. I don't can know. Can you can Planeswalkers be sacked to smoke sex? I don't think so. Sweet. Elspeth. I mean, if I was Kemper, I would have conceded two turns ago, but that's just me. Yeah. And out of frustration, when my opponent attacks me with Elspeth and Gideon, and we're not playing standard, I'm going to be frustrated. Yeah. Like, that's a Gideon Jura. I haven't seen Gideon Jura. He has to be the only person playing Gideon Jura in Legacy. I'm sure there's probably, there are a lot. There are like over 150 people in this tournament. So you think someone else is playing this deck with Gideon? Um, maybe. I don't know if anybody else is playing this specific deck. Like, this is a pretty rare deck to see around, especially, like, these days. But, um, I mean, I know that when Elspeth came out, there, like, I had some people who I was on some forums with who were talking about putting Elspeth in this deck. Yeah, I mean, I, I, so, I heard about Jay. He was, he was actually talking to Kyle Rose earlier, and, uh... Kyle Rose played a deck very similar to this, like, way back in the day yeah, when were, he, uh, I think... He, okay, I, so... Oh, he won hit, he won a... He, I think he won Pro Tour, like Rising Waters or something, yeah. which was uh, a deck very similar to this. Yeah. So the board so. state, the judge just figured out the intuition that should be in the deck, and they're shuffling it in now. So Kemper is probably going to get a warning for that. But yeah, so Jay was talking to Kyle and laughing. Kyle's, Kyle's just like, wow, I feel like I'm in like 2000 again from the deck he's playing. He's at nine. And this game is very over. This deck has to have the most standard legal cards of any deck in the format, right? Besides, like, basic lands, right? Um, I don't I mean, know. Creatures are really good from the new sets. So, I guess standard legal, yeah, though, you're yeah, right. Yeah, because they're, they're Noble Heart, Goyce, Vendillion Clicks, things like that. All right, well, yeah. Jay takes a fast game on way faster than I thought it was going to be. Yeah, me too. I mean, that was really <laughs> exciting. I'm happy. He's even got an Angel's Grace. It just says, like, the blowout tr trump. Uh, I don't know what any of these cards are. Tariff. Um, uh, tariff is... Uh, so if you have less lands than your opponent, uh, you search your library for... How does this work again? It's, it's a card from Napster, actually. Oh, it's just one mana, right? Yeah, so each player... Uh, no, Tariff is each player sacrifices the creature he or she controls with the highest converted mana cost. Unless she pays, the, or unless he or she pays the creature's mana cost, and if two creatures are tied for the highest, okay. then they choose one. So it's like a black edict. Yeah, it's just for Emrakul. Yeah. So he's got like more hate for this guy. This poor guy. Morning Tide. What's that? Morning Tide is one and a white, and it removes all cards and all graveyards from the game. Oh, cool. Yeah. All right. Yeah, his one of Krakus saved him that game. Only, only out because he didn't have Oblivion Ring. I mean, Oblivion would have worked as well. Yeah, so he had five outs. Yeah. With well, the sweetest one. Two draw steps. The sweetest yeah. one was Krakus, though. He actually could have had, like, three draw steps if he just done differently, too, so. Sure. <sighs> no yawning during this match. None of that. I'm trying not to. Don't do it. All right, so he has spell That's pierces that are probably. Me. Yeah, Kemper's probably going to bring in spell pierces. That hits smokestacks, and that hits Trinosphere, and the, the really complicated. Or like the really cards that make his life, you know, terrible. Chalice of the Void, just on zero. That's half the combo too, right there. It's pretty sick. This is unreal. This matchup is just terrible. 
it actually just can't really get any worse. I mean, unless we up the, the, the number of Sundial the Infinite to four. <laughs> yeah. I can't even believe Sundial the Infinite. I'm trying to With think about With humility, like too. Like, he just has so many outs to this combo. And, and he has... And, and Kemper has no way to do it. So he needs to, like, just turn two, go off. And Jay have nothing. He even has Druidic Satchel in the new set. Yeah, that's pretty sweet. That actually is pretty sweet. Yeah. In this deck. I mean, I've, I've had it in Limited, and I found it, you know, getting lands out the top is pretty sweet. Getting a token is sweet. And, like, even getting two lights sometimes is cool. Like, you get value every turn out of that card. Yeah. And, I mean, just the fact that it makes, like, permanence, you're, uh, you know, you're just making more permanence for your smoke Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's either going to be a land that you can sack or a creature you can sack. Yeah, he's never getting life. <laughs> Kemper just looks destroyed right now. Yeah, he can't be too happy. Go Terps! University of Maryland. Oh, I thought I said University of Maryland. It's University of... Uh, University of Mary Washington. So you were Mary. wrong. Yeah. All right, so yeah, Kemper keeps, Jay keeps. Does he have turn two? No, he has turn two intuition. All right. All right, so if it looks that if Kemper can get off really quick just with the hive mind portion, he's gonna beat him. Uh, he has. Uh, Jay has an answer to what is that? Oh, Crucible that's a... of Worlds. Crucible of Worlds. Yeah, which he can combo with his Wasteland. Yeah, and uh, he can also uh, just use that with his Smokestack. Yeah, but I think it's kind of a weird keep. Yeah, because Kemper can show and tell. He can go get show and tell with Intuition, and if he has a Pact, he just wins now. Unless Jay has his Angel's Grace. And then if he does, Kemper loses. But I don't know if he has his one of Angel's Grace in hand. He has a couple of Oblivion Rings. What's that what other white card? Humility? That's not humility. What I know it's that? not Angel's Grace. It might, it might be the uh, Tariff? I don't know. No, I don't know. It's something like that Tempest Tariff. Oh, it is the Tempest Tariff. Okay. Okay, yeah. So he has tariff. So he has every way to deal with the get the, the one side of the combo. But none to deal with the uh, the pack the pack side. So here's show and tell. Mm hmm He's going to put Hive Mind into play. Oblivion Ring comes into play. In response to Oblivion Ring trigger, he's going to play Red Pact. Yeah, it's not like it just goes away right away. Like Yeah, he gets to play the red pact. He just wins. Like, he has multiple. Yeah. The game is over. He's asking, can I respond to this? Why wouldn't you be able to? Well, he doesn't know. Um, so, yeah, I guess you, like, it's completely reasonable. Yeah, he's just asking, making sure he's under the camera, he's down a game. Yeah. Oh. He feels behind because of how bad last game went. Just making sure he can do everything he can do. Yeah, so now he's like, trigger on. Alright, summer's back. Alright, game three. And this is one where Jay's gonna keep a hand full of hate. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, Hive Mind has become like the premier combo deck of this format. Yeah. I think a lot of other decks that people are trying to experiment with have proven themselves to really not be worth it in Legacy. Mm -hmm. uh, like Elves has become unplayable since the uh, inclusion of Mental Misstep. Yeah, and it's, I think it's a really Mind's rough deck. And I think a better deck anyway. Yeah. Um, the Cephalid deck has also gotten uh, some hate from Mental Misstep. And I, I still think that deck is very good. 
but I think Hive Mind is way more resilient, even mm -hmm. if the Cephalid deck is like a turn faster on average. Oh, I completely agree with that. As you were telling me that, though, I saw a draft walk by and I'm like salivating at the mouth. I think anybody's playing modern right now? So. No, I don't think here. I didn't hear it be called. I don't know. Being at, being at these SCG opens like rejuvenates me. I just want to play Magic right now. <laughs> yeah, there's so many people playing Magic here. How many games of Magic are happening right now? I signed up for this. It feels like torture. <laughs> like, <laughs> I didn't realize that there would be you know 400 people in this room playing Magic, and I'm not one of them. How brutal is that? I mean, like, I'm, I love ta I'm talking about it. I'm hanging out with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess we're it's, having it's good, fair, times. Yeah. good times. It's fair, yeah. We're going to watch... We're gonna watch Jay lock his opponent out in turn two again with the most obscure cards ever. I'm not being I'm never biased towards people, but the deck I really want to just see Sundial of Infinite just oh, lock yeah. him out like. And Sundial of the Infinite's about as awesome as it gets. <laughs> he has Yeah, so here's here's his hate cards. For the Emrakul side, he has four Oblivion Rings, Caracas, um Tariff. Tar Two tariffs and three humility, and then on the other side, the side against um, hive, mind. hive mind, he has four, three Trinospheres, uh, three, three Sundial of the Infinites, an Angel's Grace, and four Chalice of the Void. Almost like forty percent of his deck just hates Kemper's deck. It's unreal. Yeah, like, it, literally, he can just mulligan into a hand that cannot lose to anything they can do. Yeah, I think his first hand was maybe a little bit of a loose gate. I mean, yeah, I, I don't think there's, like, any reason for him to ever try to keep a proactive hand. <laughs> yeah. This deck's just so good. <laughs> All right. <coughs> Camber's just got to dodge a bullet. All he has to do is dodge a bullet. Yeah, Camber's just thinking, all right, one time. Just one time, let's get lucky. Look at that face, he just... See, this is the face of somebody that knows you're in a really bad matchup, and you're like, I got lucky once, just so... just It's just going to make Game 3 that much more painful. Yeah. Alright, let's see. Alright, so... What does he have in hand? An Oblivion and a Sundial and an Elspeth? Yeah. Alright, so... So he can't win. So it's turn, yep. if he gets to go, go turn two Sundial, that's uh, GG. If he, yep. if he resolves. We're going to see Sundial forced. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. I would force Sundial here. Oh, for sure. I don't like Slaughter Pact. I guess it's not bad. I guess it can kill like a Gideon. Yeah, I don't like it. But there's not many here. targets I mean, for it. I think he just has it as like a way to turn on his hive mind that can just happenstance be yeah. playable. All right, so <laughs> he's going to keep his ponder and yeah, send the turn back over to Jay. Jay's going to drop Sundial the Infinite. It's going to get forced. Definitely getting forced. He's not going to play it, huh? He's just going to reach an import. Oh, that's, uh... oh he's just going to hold it in hand until... Well, yeah, see, he can just hold... Well, then it's a guessing game, which... Which combo he's playing, you know what I oh, mean? Oh, yeah, because then when he's show and tells, he can But just... he doesn't know which side, though. It's kind of a 50-50. All right, here's Smokestacks that's going to get countered. All right, so he's going to force pitching one of his hive mines. Yeah, 
he absolutely has to force smoke stacks. Smokestack, one of the uh, one of the most awesome prison cards of all time. Yeah, it's very good. I get to play with it in cube every once in a while. It's so powerful. All right, so he's got a decent amount of uh, lands that can help cheap mana, mm -hmm. a brainstorm, some packs, and an intuition. And I think the game's locked up for Jay because, in my opinion, if 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 my opponent goes, yeah, I definitely. Oh, put he's got show until now. Yeah, I put yeah, the sundial in, yeah. and then I have can play the oblivion ring if I yeah. need to next turn. <laughs> <laughs> you just feel so dirty. It's so insane. It's actually who just has insane. these cards? And what's Kemper thinking? Like, come on, give me a break. We got to videotape this. Like, this never happens. This is oh. this is what you get for, you know, being Star City Games, Open Lizers, a match this amazing. Yeah. I mean, like, this is about as cool as stuff gets. Yeah. Oh, show and tell. Here's my high... Mi oh, Sundial. I have a combo. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, Sundial. Oh, wait. So, if, do you want to brainstorm? Okay, I'm going to brainstorm. <laughs> do you want to ponder? I'm going to ponder. You want to show and tell? We're putting lots of permanents into play. <laughs> what did he do there? Uh, I don't know. Oh, Druidic Satchel. Oh, we're going deep. Yep. Yeah, do you want to brainstorm? <laughs> Activate All right, Druidic Satchel. Alright, he goes satchel. to 16. Activates the Satchel. Flips over Smokestacks. Goes back to 18. Drops Smokestacks. Laughs a little bit inside. Oh, he kept yeah. Ghostly Prison in, too. That's kind of weird. That's really weird. Maybe he just didn't have enough outs. But Wrath would have been better. Yeah. Oh, well, I mean... All right. Goes 16. This is absolutely absurd. Smoke stack. I don't even know if I play the smokestack there. Why not? Keep I it on mean, one. Yeah, I guess you just keep it on one. And you satchel. You have satchel. You're going to get him down to zero permanence. Oh, yeah. Wow. I guess there's just... Brainstorm? But at this Who point, you can't first? possibly lose. Oh, hide mine. He's like, brainstorm. And he's like, I... Okay. <laughs> and now he gets to set it up. Oh, but he doesn't have a... He doesn't have anything to, like, cheat Valio. That's rough. All right, so he has show and tell Emrakul. Which, which now is, oh, he's not even gonna do it right away? Yes, I did it, yeah. Oh, I see. Show and tell. <laughs> Emrakul. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, He's so <laughs> tilted. Yeah, I mean, I, how tilted would you be? Yeah, this is really bad. This is too funny. He's just gonna give up. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's no, there's nothing he can really do. Yeah, I mean, that's just it's running into that matchup is just yeah. the worst. The worst matchup ever. Literally.